guys, today I will explain you the most popular SAP sustainability tools. Let's get started! If you have ever wondered how businesses track and improve their sustainability efforts using SAP, this video is for you. Today I'm breaking down four powerful SAP sustainability tools in the simplest way possible. First one, SAP Sustainability Control Tower. So imagine you're flying a plane. You need a cockpit dashboard to see fuel level, speed and direction. That's exactly what SAP SCT does, but for sustainability. It gives companies a clear overview of their carbon footprint, energy consumption and ESG, which is the environmental, social and governance performance. It helps them stay on track with regulations and goals. So ESG metrics help companies measure how they are performing in three key areas. First one, environmental. So what a company does to help the planet. Company could invest in solar panels, save water in production and reduce waste in manufacturing and so on. Next, social. So how does a company treat its people? Does it have fair wages? Is it a safe working place? Does it support local education or promote gender equality? Does it have diversity in leadership? And the last would be governance. So how is a company running? So does it have a diverse board of directors? Is it transparent in business operations? And so on. Next, I would like to show you guys a demo of SAP Sustainability Control Tower. All right, so we are here on the first page of SAP Sustainability Control Tower. We got the insights here, all the ESG metrics and uh, also stuff like water consumption, uh, work-related incidents, uh, share of women in governance body. So when I click in here, I can see all the company's ambitions here and um, we can see whether we are on track and there are all the metrics which we just saw in the first page but with a nice chart and uh, we chose the trend so yeah we can set ambitions here for each year and track them all the way So the SAP Sustainability Control Tower can also depict the EU taxonomy regulations which is created by the European Union to help businesses and investors know which activities are environmentally sustainable. It focuses on aligning investments with climate and sustainability goals. Those activities can be found in the capital expenditure, in the operational expenditure and in the turnover. So it could be something like a big investment or purchases like buying solar panels, which are meant to improve sustainability, or in the OPEX, it could be expenses that are needed for running a business, such as paying for electricity bills, and it includes ongoing costs related to sustainability efforts, and also the turnover which is the total income a business generates from selling its products or services and it helps measure how much of a business's activities are related to sustainable practices. So once we have listed all of our purchases or everyday expenses, total incomes from selling and so on, then we can measure whether an activity is taxonomy eligible, which means that something or an activity, for example, buying a solar panel, it could be green, but it still needs an assessment. And green means that if an activity meets certain criteria established by the EU taxonomy, which is a set of rules designed to guide investors and companies on what can be classified as environmentally sustainable. And if all those criteria are met, then an activity is considered as sustainable. This means that this activity is taxonomy aligned. Of course, the EU taxonomy is not that easy. 
But I just wanted to give you an overview just for you to understand what it means and we will go more in detail in the next sessions. So here we have the EU taxonomy tab. We can add here all the taxonomy activities and criteria and can review the financials regarding capex, opex and turnover. And once we're finished with each step here, we can call a report directly out of the SAP SCT and have a whole report of all our data which we need to report on. And this is done automatically. Next tool is the SAP Sustainability Footprint Management. Imagine you run a business and want to know how much your company is contributing to climate change. SAP Sustainability Footprint Management helps you track all the pollution your company is causing from things like the energy you use to produce your products, the materials you buy, even how your employees travel to work. It lets you see your carbon footprint, which is a way of measuring all the greenhouse gases your company is putting into the air. SAP SFM can depict Scope 1, Scope 2 and Scope 3 emissions. This means it can track direct emissions, which are sources owned or controlled by the company, such as company vehicles. Also, the indirect emissions can be measured, which are the purchased electricity, for example, steam, heating, and of course, all other indirect emissions, such as purchased goods, business travels, waste disposal, and so on. This tool helps you figure out exactly where your emissions come from and how big they are, whether it's from the energy you use, like electricity or gas, the things you buy from other companies, or even how your products impact the environment after they are sold. Let's have a quick demo on the SAP SFM. So here we can see the footprint overview purchase goods, sold products, energy consumers, generated waste. And once we click on the footprint overview, we can see the scope one, two and three emissions, which are all together in this case, 58 uh, tons for January uh, 2024. And we have different charts depicted by plants or GHG categories. And clicking on purchase products, we can see the CO2 for purchased goods. We can also filter by product, group, supplier and plant. And if you're wondering how you can gather your supplier's emissions data, SAP has you covered there too. Because SAP Data Exchange which is a tool designed to seamlessly integrate with SAP SFM, allows you to collect emissions data directly from your suppliers. This ensures you to have a complete accurate view of your supply chain's carbon footprint, helping you make more sustainable choices and enabling better tracking of emissions across the entire network. With SAP Data Exchange, you can easily obtain the data you need to support your sustainability goals. The next one, which I would like to introduce, which is also very important is the SAP Green Token. It supports traceability and transparency of material sustainability facts with segregation or mass balancing and tokenization for trust and compliance with recognized standards. But what does that all mean? So imagine you run a company that uses raw materials to make products. You want to make sure that the materials you use are sustainable and meet certain standards. But tracking where these materials come from and how they are handled can be complicated. All right, you can think of SAP Green Token as a digital notebook, for example, that helps you track every step of the materials journey. From when it leaves the supplier to when it's processed in your factory and all the way to when it's sold to your customers. It's like having a map that shows you exactly where the materials came from and how they were handled, so you can be sure everything is sustainable. 
It also provides a special kind of stamp that proves the materials are certified and that you're following the right rules. This kind of stamp stays with the material through the entire process, ensuring that everyone along the way can trust the information. And just for your understanding where the name Green Token came from, so the stamp which I just told you, which you or which stays with the material through the entire process, it's called the token. This token cannot be changed through the entire process. So in the SAP Green Token, we can implement different regulations. And one of it is the EUDR, the EU Deforestation Regulation. So what does that mean? So let's say you're in charge of a company that imports goods like cocoa, coffee or palm oil from different countries to sell in the EU. So the European Union wants to make sure that these products are linked to deforestation or destruction of forests. So they've created a rule called the EU Deforestation Regulation. So you can think of it like a rule book that says like if you want to sell these products in the EU, you need to prove they don't come from places where forests have been cut down or damaged illegally. This means that you need to show exactly where these products came from and how they were grown or sourced. Another regulation is the ISCC or the ISCC Plus, the International Sustainability and Carbon Certification. So when you get ISCC certifications, it means that your business is proven to use sustainable and traceable materials, which is good for both the planet and your reputation. So just to give you a glimpse of one section of the tool, this is the chain of custody which is a visual representation of materials move through different stages of production while maintaining their certified sustainability status. So here, for example, we start with the biofeedstock, which is a raw material that is completely sustainable and certified 100% as we see here. And from here it's transformed into Biosustainable NAFTA, and in this case, Alpha Company produces uh, 15,000 kg of biofeedstock, which is entirely certified as sustainable. And this material is then transferred to Beta Company. At the bottom, we can see how the Biosustainable NAFTA moves from Alpha to Beta Company, and then Beta continues to process the material into ethylene. And we see there is a lot of movement here, but what's important, what's key is that we are tracking how much of this material is certified at every stage. So transparency is everything, especially when it comes to sustainability. Next one that I would like to introduce you is the SAP Green Ledger. So at its core, SAP Green Ledger serves as like a central hub for managing and accounting for GHG emissions across your business. So once the data is collected, the next step is posting it to your journal. With the Manage Carbon Collections app, carbon accountants can post the emissions data they've gathered to the journal for accounting purposes. And if you want to review existing journal entries, you can do that too in the Manage Journal Entries app. All right, now it's time to allocate the emissions data. And this step is crucial because it helps businesses determine which parts of the organization are responsible for generating specific carbon emissions. Using the Display Account Balance and Manage Allocations app, companies can allocate emissions to the correct cost centers, profit centers and accounts. This ensures that the carbon footprint is tracked accurately at every level. For reporting purposes, you can view the allocated balances and line items in the Display Account Balances and Display Allocated Line Items apps. 
This provides a clear breakdown of emissions by different business units and activities, ensuring full transparency and traceability. Finally, to analyze and review all the data you've collected and allocated, the SAP GreenLedger dashboard, which is based on the SAP Analytics Cloud, gives you real-time insights. It allows you to visualize and analyze your sustainability performance, enabling better decision-making to reduce your company's carbon footprint. So here's a quick look at SAP GreenLedger, or just one part of it, of course. And this is where a company records all its greenhouse gas emissions. You can see on the top left the material name, here it's green car, and the total emission amount for this material is listed as 71,000 tons of CO2. What this means is that every time the company processes materials like green car, it calculates the total emissions associated with that process, broken down into three scopes, scope one, scope two, and scope three emissions. This makes tracking emissions from direct operations, energy use, and even third-party suppliers transparent and measurable. Now, let's take a look at the line items. This is where all the transaction data is captured. This makes it so interesting, guys. So each entry is detailed, showing the associated accounts, emission scope, and even the product quantity and material. For instance, we have multiple line items here for green car, each showing a breakdown of the emissions and the related quantities for every single part of the production process. So as you can see, SAP Green Ledger isn't just about tracking emissions, it's about integrating sustainability into your financial processes. So I get a lot of questions regarding integration. The SAP sustainability tools offer many integration options. So we can connect via APIs, we can upload CSV files, connect to S4 HANA Cloud and on-prem. We can import data from SAP Datasphere and we can use OData for data transports. All right, guys, we came to the end of my video and I hope you got that aha moment for the SAP sustainability tools. And if you liked it, give me a thumbs up, subscribe and share my video.